Hey everyone, Courtney Gruen Holes back here again with another uh, Fear Street video. As you can see, still have my Fear Street bling going on. Shady Side High School in 1989, which is the year that the first book came out. So, again, I got this from T Public. Um, I always get the men's uh, 3XL shirts just because they're big and comfy. And I always get the classic t shirt because they have a lot more colors to choose from. So, uh, the design for this was red, so I got white because the colors of Shady Side High School in the Fair Street books are maroon and white. Uh, so, I know, I'm a nerd, but it's my shirt, so. Anyway, uh, my last video, like I said, was kind of like, uh, I guess, uh, a redo of my Fear Street book collection. Um, going through the books from the original run when the books were published by uh, Archway Paperbacks before the, they switched over to Gold Key uh, in the later part of the years. So, again, so this is not talking about any of the relaunch books, Return to Fear Streets, or anything published by Gold Key. Um, and also, um, since there are 10 books that I am missing, and two of them are from the Fear Street Seniors. So, can't really talk about that. And you do, you do kind of need all the books to talk about it because it's kind of an ongoing series. So, um, and then I can't talk about the last five Fear Street Sagas because I don't have them. So, and then, um, of course, not discussing the new Fear Street books where there were four of them because I'm missing two. And I can talk about all the original run books except for the final one, Trap, because I don't have that one yet. Um, I also have the two book uh, Fear Hall ones, but I have not read them yet, so I can't talk about them yet. So, mostly I've been kind of collecting the books to see if I can have all of them before I read through all of them. But, all the others I've read through. So, um, so again, it's kind of like my recommendations for also what are the best books to read if you want to start out reading Fear Street. If you can find all of the original run books and um, telling you like my favorite covers of, of the books and... Um, talking about like the super chillers and the trilogy books that come out. So I've already discussed the Fear Street Sagas from 1 to 10 and the Fear Street Saga with the first three books in that collection. So um, I guess before I get to actual like standalone books, I'm still going to talk about um, some of the trilogies that were released. And kind of going in, you know, like my favorites to like my kind of, I wouldn't say non-favorites. I like all the Fear Street books. And so kind of biased and nostalgic. And of course, they're the books that I kept from my childhood the most. I kept a couple of my Babysitter Club books, which I have up on the shelf above my Fear Street books. So, but when I was younger, I guess I thought it was much cooler to have Fear Street books than Babysitter Club books. But I kept my favorites. So maybe I'll eventually go through... Uh, again about my babysitter's club books in the future because I got some new ones after I talked about those before and Maybe a video going through my YA collection, you know Carolyn B. Cooney, Christopher Pike, all those other books since I have acquired more since my last video so I'm eventually gonna go back to talking about my books. So but right now while I'm kind of rocking my Fear Street stuff uh, which I'm probably going to wear the shirts a lot because I like them and there's not a lot of Fear Street merch out there so there is probably now because of the movies but nothing that represents old school Fear Street so so enough rambling I'll continue again uh, next up another one of my favorite trilogies so probably my next favorite trilogy of books besides the Fear Street saga are the books in the 99 Fear Street, The House of Evil trilogy. So, on my uh, little cover collage shirt in my last video, they had images for the second horror and the third horror on the shirt, but they never had the 
they didn't have the cover for the first tour, which has always been my favorite one. So, um, it talks about the Frazier family who moved to the house of 99 Fear Street. And there are two fraternal twins, sisters, Callie and Cody, who are not very thrilled about moving into this kind of awful looking house because nobody's lived in it for 30 years because something really bad happened in the house 30 years ago. But the Frazier family are from a whole different town and they don't know all the stories about Fear Street. So um, the father gets the house cheap. It's a real fixer upper that they have to work on. So, but um, Callie's the more pretty, pretty popular one than Cody. Cody is, you know, kind of more like shy and she's into all these weird things, you know, um, like ghosts and stuff like that. And I guess she's always kind of like in Callie's shadow because she's the more bubbly, upbeat twin. But they move in the house with their mom and their dad and their little brother James. And all sorts of stuff happens to this family. And it's probably the most heartbreaking trilogy out of all of the trilogies. Because um, you have the Fear Street Saga and you have the cheer, the Cheerleaders trilogy, which expanded a little bit more. And they're um, depressing in a way, but we get a lot thrown at us in the first book. And you just feel really bad for this family. It's There's a lot of gruesome imagery in it, and then it just gets to this family. And then, of course, there are two other books... So, um, it's good to tell by the uh, third one, the third horror, uh, it's a ghost, and not to spoil for anything, but it's the ghost of Callie Fraser. She becomes a victim of the house in the first book, and the uh, next two books, well the next book, the second horror, is about a family that moves in to the house after the Fraser family is gone, the McCoy family, and they move in with their teenage son, Brant, and he becomes like an obsession, I guess, for Callie, because he's alive, she's dead, so I guess she kind of wants him to be a ghost like her and be a part of evil of the house so she won't be lonely. And um, it also is kind of sad towards the ending, and then as always sometimes in the third installment of a trilogy in the third horror uh callie's sister cody comes back to the house they are now going to be making a movie about the horrors of 99 fear street and cody is set to play callie and she promised she promised callie that she would come back and save her from the house but she has no idea that her sister doesn't want to be saved, especially by Cody. So, but it's a pretty kind of heartbreaking trilogy if you think about it. And uh, so, but I recommend this. And all three books had like this, you know, like neon daylo orange color. Because almost like all the other books. They didn't have like this one color scheme. This is all the same color. So I always kind of liked how neat that was. So. Uh, and then, of course, we have the cheerleaders. Now, it started as a trilogy and ended up being like five books connected. So um, I'm not really sure what you would call it. So I would just call it like a cheerleaders franchise because... I really don't know what you would call it when it's five movies because it's, you know, not a trilogy anymore. It's not a quadrilogy, so if you figure out what it what it is, leave it in the comments. Let me know. So I, I don't pretend that I'm, you know, I know all these big words, so, but, so, first there was the cheerleader trilogy and then it turned into like a quadrilogy. So the first three books, cheerleaders, 
course, they had the they had the third evil and the first evil on my shirt, but they didn't have the one for the second evil. That is my my favorite cover after this one. So, because it really draws your eye. I'm not saying that the third one's bad. It's just uh, not exactly one of my favorites. I guess I just like how the cheerleaders are just there and it's just stark and there's nothing else in there but them. So, but another good cover art artwork by Bill Schmidt. So, I love all this. And, uh, of course, the... Uh, cheerleaders begin with uh, Bobby and Corky Krikorin moving to Shadyside. They are big time cheerleaders from their squad in Missouri and they come to try out for the team and there gets to be a little animosity from the cheerleaders when it causes one of the girls named Ronnie to be kicked off the squad and her friends Kimmy and Deborah and of course, some of the other cheers, cheerleaders are upset that she got knocked off, and she's a freshman, so um, so everybody has animosity towards these blonde cheerleading twins, and um, they befriend uh, the captain named Jennifer, and she's really nice to them. So um, they are on their way to an away game on the bus, but they have to go back to the sister's house on Fear Street because they forgot um, their fire batons, I guess. I think that's what it is. So they go back and they get in an accident and Jennifer is thrown from the bus and they think that she's dead, but she's alive, but she's paralyzed from the waist down. And uh, after all that happens, strange things start happening to the cheerleaders oh, of Shady Side High. They get most of them being Bobby. She ends up getting um, all these, hearing these weird voices and seeing these weird things happen and no, nobody, not even Corky, believes her. And then, um, spoiler, oh, Bobby gets killed and then Corky realizes everything Bobby was telling her was true and then they find out there is an evil spirit taunting them. But, uh, that would be telling a little bit what all happens, but then it continues on to the second book and then the third book, and by the time the third book came out, we go back and learn a little bit about the uh, backstory. We learned some of it in the second evil book. We go back and learn about Sarah Fear, so who turns out to be the evil. But uh, unlike the Fear Street movies where they kind of redeem her and make her innocent, she is not innocent in this. But it goes back into the backstory a little bit more in The Awakening Evil. But uh, my cousin had these books and I saw the cover for the first one and so that really got my interest. So Cheerleaders is definitely a good place to start. Any of these trilogies so far that I've talked about are good places to start. So. Um, those three and then they uh, came out with one of the super chillers the new evil and uh, unlike some artwork for some books this actually does happen in the book where Corky gets attacked by someone dressed up as Santa but uh, I won't tell a little bit about that but again it's still they thought the evil's gone, the evil's back, they try to find out where it is, bad things happen, and it's pretty much the same thing that happens. Uh, the cover art for this one wasn't by Bill Schmidt, it was by David Jarvis. That's why I had to look at it real quick, because I knew that Bill Schmidt did uh, most of the cover art from book 7, Haunted, like all the way towards the end, but in the like middle, like, like around like 95 or something. I think um, David Jarvis did some of the artwork for the books, but so yeah, it's set around Christmas time, so Christmassy evil fun, uh, so but then of course these 
four cheerleader books came in a gift pack oh, a long time ago and it had the artwork for this but it didn't have any of the, the titles and stuff on it so you could actually see the art and uh, they also had Fear Street calendars for 1996, 1997, and 1998 which featured the artwork with you know nothing on it so if you were lucky enough to have one of those calendars good on you I went to the bookstores to get these books all the time and I never saw the calendars because bookstores sell calendars. So I never saw a Fair Street calendar anytime I ever went to B. Dalton to buy any of these books. So I guess I missed out. So, um, and actually, um, another trilogy that I would recommend reading if you can find it. Some people I've seen are having have a hard time finding these books but they had them for sale in like I guess the Rite Aid or something because I was there one day with my mom and dad and I saw saw them come out with this new trilogy and I went buy them all the time so and this is the Cataluna Chronicles trilogy which is where I got the name for my band in my books Cataluna and it even because it even tells you that, you know, uh, they saw these Fear Street books, saw, saw the name, thought it was a pretty cool name for a band name, and that's where I got it from. So, Cataluna Chronicles. So, um, in the first two books, we switch back and forth between, just make sure I get the century right. <laughs> Uh, the late 17th century so so set a little bit after the beginning timeline of the Fear Street saga so we're in the first two books we're thrown back in time to the early to the late 17th century early 18th century um, involving first a girl named Catherine Hatchet who is feared to be a witch by the people in her town and she falls in love with a young man he takes advantage of her she has nobody on her side except for this old woman who lives in a house in the woods and she happens to be a witch and she tries to help Catherine out but everybody thinks that she's just as bad as Catherine is because she's a witch and um, Catherine's path crosses with the boy who used, used, used her named Joseph Parker his brother William um, and then Catherine come to odds and their journey goes across the first two books and then comes to a head in a weird way in the third one but in present day time, we're focused on uh, many people who get connected to this sleek little sports car called a Cataluna with a crescent moon design on the, on the fender. And the first book is about a boy named Brian who wants the car more than anything in the world. And he will do anything to get it. And then the next book revolves around um, sisters, I believe, they're stepsisters, yep, yeah, Regina and Lauren. And uh, it, the car sort of becomes almost like a wedge in between the two sisters. And uh, then we're followed in the third book by a young guy named Buddy whose brother Stan is a race car driver and this is after mysterious things and mysterious deaths have happened connected to the Cataluna car so he drives it in a race and ends up losing his life and then um, Buddy tries to uh, get revenge for his brother's death and uh, also is in this triangle with his girlfriend Sarah and a guy named Will. Hmm. So it's actually really interesting. So I've heard I've heard it called like a Christine for 
you know, R.L. Stein's Christine. So, and uh, again, R.L. Stein was always like a gateway to going into stuff like Christopher Pike and um, Stephen King. Speaking of Stephen King, uh, again, uh, the cover art for this was not done by Bill Schmidt. It was done by Don uh, Brodigan, is what I'm going to say it is. And um, I did this in my last video. He didn't do a lot of cover art for um, Stephen King books that got published. So, uh, very interesting art. All encompassed with trees and um, like crescent moon in the background here, full moon in the background here, a fire here in appropriately called the deadly fire but all all that takes place in the woods and things happening and out of all three my favorite is the one for the first one with the girl sitting on the car and uh, if you ever get a chance to actually look at the cover really close up her eyes are really mysterious like a cat's so Cataluna Cat Moon. I always thought that was kind of neat. So she just has this kind of evil expression, but she's just sitting on this car, like so casually, and it's my favorite out of all three covers. But if you ever get a chance to find the Cataluna Chronicles, I give them a read. So this video gets to be a little bit longer than the last one. So, um, there are a couple of other trilogies that were put out, but um, most of the time the super chillers were the ways to get like sequels and some trilogies. You had a couple of um, sequels in like the like original run standalone books, but again, the super chillers were good for continuing plots of other super chillers and other books from the main run. And one of the most famous super chillers is part of a three part trilogy, and it is Silent Night. So, um, of course, my collage had Silent Night 1 and Silent Night 3. Didn't have anything about Silent Night 2. I guess I uh, don't want to put a disturbing image of Santa kidnapping a girl on your shirt so but um, so the three covers um, of course I like I like the first one it's almost kind of she's behind a door but it's almost like she's trapped in a snow globe a little bit so I like that and then of course you have like the almost like the silent night deadly night horror movies kind of outlook for the second one to even the way it's written just in that scroll and then Silent Night 3 um, these are one of the covers that Bill Schmidt did that started to get kind of more like photo realistic kind of so like you could tell like it was artwork from like the first two but this started to get more realistic towards the end of the run of Fear Streets but the Silent Night trilogy centers around Rila Dalby the uh, biggest uh, B I T C H in all of Shadyside. This girl is cold and cruel and will just put anybody down that is beneath her. But we kind of learn there is a little bit to Reva. Her mother died when she was younger. She has a younger brother. So her brother and her dad even though her brother is an annoying little kid brother, are like the only two people in the world that she is nice to. She's not even nice to her cousin Pam. So, but she goes through boys like tissue paper, she'll step on other girls to get guys that she wants, and eventually it pushes people over the edge to go after Riva and make her pay for the way she acts. And R.L. Stein has commented that he loves writing Reva because she is such a bitchy character. So, he's actually really good at writing bitchy characters. So, there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them in Shadyside. 
in these books. So Shady Side's mostly filled with like nice, nice girls, bitchy girls, and some of them are psychos. Because if you haven't noticed, not too many Fear Street books have male main characters. There are some, but most of them are women. So he's really good at writing women, especially the really like mean girl type girls. So, um, and of course, Reva always says she's going to change at the end of these books. But we've got three books that show that she's never going to change. And it gets her into a lot of trouble. So, I don't want to spoil it because they're really good. But um, I always heard people talk about there is this one part in Silent Night where um, it's not that big of a spoiler, but it's like one of the most shocking things that I've ever read in a book in a book because if it happened in real life you could imagine somebody doing it in real life and thinking what kind of messed up person would do that but there's a scene where like we was putting on lipstick and somebody stuck a needle in her lipstick and it's just like oh it's cringy and you're just Ugh. there's other there's other cringy things that you know happen in these books but that's one that's gonna stick around forever and uh, so if you're a little messed up, you'll probably like that, but, so, these three books, uh, they do kind of have the same kind of Christmassy kind of theme, kind of colors in the schemes, so, I like that, and of course, it's one of those, uh, collectors that came, like, in its own little package, I think with these three books, and then they released a collector's edition that had all three books bound together. It's like this vellum kind of cover like the Fear Street Saga one. So, a good trilogy of super chiller books. And they are, they are super chilling. So, um, talking about sequels in the original run, I guess. This video is running a little long, so. But, um, I guess we'll stop with this last little section. Um, when it comes to books in the original run, one of the first books to ever have a sequel was The Wrong Number with the with Wrong Number 2. And as you can tell, these covers are different. They're by two different artists. Bill Schmidt did this one. And um, the first six books I think the first two had the same cover artist, and then the other ones had a different one. So, uh, this was, uh, it's just credited as Gabriel, but it was on my shirt, and then I have this cover on a shirt. So, um, our main characters, Dina, the blonde, and Jade, the redhead, in their little night clothes. And this, you know, got prominently featured in Fear Street 1994. So, um, they call up houses on Fear Street, doing little sexy calls, you know, teasing all the boys. And then Dina's stepbrother Chuck finds out, and he gets in on the game, and his phone calls become pranks of something a little different. Um, not just like calling up boys and putting on sexy voices, but his calls end up getting them in trouble. And they stumble upon a murder happening on Fear Street. And then their tale continues later in wrong number two. The killer that they thought was put away, it seems like he's back. What are Dina and Jade going to do now? So. This has little uh, little things on it to mark the pages for when I was blogging about it. I was getting ready to blog about the wrong number two when I started my new job, and then I found out I was pregnant, so I never got around to getting to it like I promised. But eventually, I might start blogging about my Fear Street books again. Sometimes I'm just better with writing than I am with actually talking, if you couldn't tell by these videos. So... But, uh, 
So I guess I like the original cover art more than Bill Schmidt's one for the sequel. Um, it's just because Jaden Dina looks so much older in this. Uh, I mean, Dina kind of looks like my mom. Uh, this one, I like it much better, and it's kind of provocative, you know, with, you know, you got Dina in her night shirt, but you can see a little bit of her legs, and then Jade's like in this, like, little camisole kind of thingy, and it's prominently focused on her legs, and they're just like, so, um, I can imagine that if, like, young boys were reading this book, they probably hid it underneath their mattresses to keep their moms from finding it, because they didn't want them to think they were reading something, like, really smutty or something. But it's a really good cover, and it's one of the best um, early run Fear Street covers. So, I guess that's where I'm going to end my video today, because I still got plenty of books to talk about. I've already taken the ones that I've talked about off my shelf, and I still have plenty more to go back over in my collection. And it's kind of fun, again, like I said, this little nostalgia kick after the movies to go back and talk about the books again. So... But we're running a little long, and uh, I still have more parts to do. <laughs> so I'm going to try to finish where I started, because I actually have a couple more Fear Street shirts that you haven't seen yet. So I like showing them off. I've got two more, and I think the next one I'm going to wear is going to actually be my wrong number shirt. Ugh. So until then, this is Courtney Gruenholz. I hope you have a good day and a good weekend. So I don't know when this video is actually going to go up. I still have my other one to kind of edit and post too. But till then, have a good day.